Again, some ladies came in since I started. Happy Mother's Day. We all appreciate you so much, whether you're a mother or just a mom without kids. You are appreciated so much. I want to get right into the scripture today. Um, John 19, 25 to 27. And as I go through this message, um, like I said earlier, my... Uh, my mother passed away in uh, 1999, so Mother's Day kind of is, is special for me, and I hope it is for you too. Um, okay. Starting in verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife, wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple who loved, whom he loved, was John, standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for setting us, setting an example for us in everything. But then you, Lord Jesus, set an example for us as, as to how we are to love and care for our mothers. Our mothers are a blessing for, from you. And we thank you for each and every one. And uh, I thank you personally, my mother, that is with you. And by your grace, I can look forward to seeing her again. I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Mary witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus from beginning to end. Can you imagine how she felt? Imagine those of us that have sons. Imagine how she felt. She watched him get whipped and beaten, and spit on, had his beard pulled out. All those things that I described a couple weeks ago in the uh, crucifixion. Mary watched that. And then she stood at the foot of the cross. I can't even imagine how she felt. It's difficult to comprehend the agony that she felt as she saw her precious son. Of all people, she knew who this was. She knew that he was perfect and sinless. And she watched all that he went through. And Jesus, while nailed to the cross and suffering in pain that we can't even imagine, turns to John and says, take care of him. And looks at his mother and, and says, let him stand in my place as your son. And I'm sure after that point, John took Mary on as his own mother. And so let, let's look at this from another viewpoint. Jesus, he's on the cross. He's bearing the weight of the sins of all humanity. He's been through all this torture. He's been through all this pain. His, his father... This is the only time where God turned his back on Jesus because Jesus represented sin. And God the Father turned his back. He experienced the emotional pain, the physical pain. And yet, he takes a second to make sure his mother's taken care of. Jesus, as God incarnate, is dealing with eternal matters. But as Jesus, the man, he's showing all of us how important it is to take care of and love our mothers. Jesus cared for her to the end. This not only shows his devotion to his purpose, 
why he came here, but it shows his love for his mother. He's an example to us in every way, especially at this moment, the honor and the love we're to have for our mothers. If your mother is still alive, regardless of your age or her age, I'm going to talk about seven different ways that you can love your mother. And I urge you to take notes because this is rather touching. Love her verbally. Basically, tell her. Tell your mother that you love her. Tell your wife, men, that you love her. Some men don't do that. They don't say those three words. They're too proud. They're too big. I don't have to say I love you. You already know it. Or, I told you once, if I change my mind, I'll let you know. Or, I show love. I don't have to say it. That may be true, but women, everybody really, needs to hear those words, I love you. I tell my wife every day, and she tells me, we love each other. That's so very important to me. Love her verbally. And one reason I say that is because one time, at some point in time, you may not be able to do that. Um, you all remember an advice column by Abigail Van Buren, um, Dear Abby. You guys remember that? Here's a letter that was written to her. Dear Abby, I enlisted shortly after Pearl Harbor. 36 days later, I was on my way to the Philippines. In route to the Philippines, in route, the Philippines fell to the Japanese, and we were rerouted to Australia. 11 days after we landed, I met the most beautiful girl in the world. On our first date, I told her I was going to marry her. I did, 18 months later, while on a 10-day R&R &R leave from New Guinea. After more than 57 years of marriage and two children, my beloved wife died five days after Christmas. Although we agreed that our ashes were to be scattered over the mountains, I found I could not part with hers. While my wife was alive, she would frequently say, You don't know how much I love you. And I would reply, Likewise. I could never bring myself to say, I love you. Now, her ashes are on my dresser, where I tell her several times a day how much I love her, but it's too late. Although I wrote poetry to her, I could not bring myself to say those three words that I know she wanted most to hear. As my dear wife was dying, and we thought she was comatose, I told her, there are not enough words to tell you how much I love you. A few hours later, she whispered, not enough words. And those were her last words. The reason I'm writing is to urge men to express their feelings while their loved ones are alive. I don't know why, but men, many men are reluctant to express the depth of their feelings. Signed, Missing My Wife in Colorado. Don't be too proud, men, to tell your wife, to tell your kids that you love them. Because one day, it may be too late. Love them verbally. Love her physically. When's the last time you gave your mom a hug? Last time you gave your wife a hug. That's another thing I'm making a point to do every day is hug my wife, right? I love hugging my I'm a hugger. I love to hug people, so if you ever get the urge to hug me, I am open to that. I'm a hugger. But I get that from my mom. Uh, I remember, if I can get through this, when I lived in Florida, she would... I'd come up here to Florida, and she would meet me at the airport, her and some other family members. And my mom, right in the airport, right in front of everybody, would give me a big hug and just squeeze so tight and, and cry and let me know how much she loved me. 
and then when I would leave, the same thing. Before I'd get on the airplane, she'd give me a big hug. <laughs> Honestly, it was kind of embarrassing. A grown man in the airport with all these people around with his mom hugging her. She was a hugger. And then in 1999, I got a call from my brother that I needed to come up here because she was in the hospital with uh, cancer. And it was all inside her. And I was up here for six weeks. At the end of that six weeks, I got on the airplane. I would have given anything. I would have given anything. To have one more hug from my mom. Hug her. Well, you can't. Tell her that you love her. Physically. Love her verbally. She changed your diapers. She potty trained you. She held Kleenex for you to blow your nose. She wiped food off your face. Probably for longer than she needed to. Sometimes she would wipe stuff off your face with a licked thumb. And your mom is the only one that can do that. I mean, Butch, what would I what would you do if I came up to you and said, Butch, you got some funny face? <laughs> a mom is the only one that can, that can do that. Nobody else. Just give her a hug. It would mean more to her than flowers or candy or eating out or a diamond necklace. Well, maybe not a diamond necklace. <laughs> Love her physically. Love her verbally. Love her patiently. Others have an incredible job with no pay. There's no position in the business world that compares to the physical, emotional, and spiritual commitment of being a mother. I mentioned that they have no pay. The pay is not monetary. The pay is a reward of kids growing up in the right way. That's the reward. I found a, a little poem called No Occupation. She rises up at break of day, though her through her chores she races. She cooks the meals as best she can and scrubs the children's faces. While school books, lunches, homeworks too, all need consideration. And yet the census man insists she has no occupation. While breakfast dishes are all done, she makes pudding, maybe, and cleans the rooms up one by one with one eye watching baby. The laundry pile she then attacks by way of variation. And yet the census man insists she has no occupation. She irons for a little while, then presses pants for daddy. She welcome, welcomes with a happy smile, returning lass and laddie. A hearty dinner next she cooks, no time for relaxation. And yet the census man insists she has no occupation. Don't ever make the mistake of asking a lady, do you work or do you stay at home? Do not do that. That's as bad as asking a woman when she's due when she's not pregnant. <laughs> I know someone that did that and he said he, he said he felt about that tall. So do not do that. So in spite of all she does, we often become impatient with her. We get so used to everything being done, and uh, we expect it, and when it's not done the way we expect it, we get irritated. Um, love her patiently, because she's your mother. She's sensitive to your needs, and there's no reason to take advantage of her in that way. Be patient with her. Love her patiently. James Dobson, he has a radio show called focus on the family. He got a letter from a 80-year-old uh, lady on her birthday, on her 80th year birthday, that said, to all my children, I suppose 
my upcoming birthday started my thoughts along these lines. This is a good time to tell you that what I truly want are things I can never get enough of, yet they're free. I want the intangibles. I would like for you to come and just sit with me and for you to be relaxed. We can talk or we can be silent. I would just like for us to be together. I need your patience when I don't hear what you say the first time. I know how tiresome it is to always be repeating, but sometimes I must ask you to repeat. I need your patience when I think too much about the past and my slowness and my set ways. I want you to be tolerant with what the years have done to me physically. Please be understanding about my personal care habits. I spill things. I lose things. I get overly agitated when I can't figure out my bank statement. I can't remember what time to take my medication or if I took it at all. I take too many naps. Sometimes sleep helps pass the day. Well, there you have it. Time, patience, understanding. These are priceless gifts that I want. Finally, in his letter, the Apostle Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know I can too. It's a wonderful feeling to know his eyes on the sparrow and I know he cares for me. I guess being old isn't bad after all. Love, Mom. Love her patiently. And the fourth one is love her attentively. Love her attentively. <coughs> Mothers, listen. She has a sympathetic ear, and she always has. Even as an adult, you go to her for advice. And again, as someone that has lost her mom, I can't tell you how many times I would love to go to my mom and just get her advice and talk to her. Just talk to her. There was a documentary on TV a while back about um, men who have um, their murderers and they were going to be executed for their crimes. Um, they interviewed the men and their mothers and the mothers almost invariably said, he's such a good boy. And the interviewer would say, yes, but he killed people. And the mother would say, I know, but he has such a good heart. It's no wonder. We like to talk to mom. She listens. She's always listened. Even when we were teenagers and we didn't want her to listen, she listened. She was always there. In their older days, our parents have many fears, anxieties. May we treat them in a way that we should want to be treated when we're in there. So love her verbally, love her physically, love her attentively, love her patiently. Number five, love her gratefully. Love her gratefully. Think about all the things your mom did for you, all the things your mom gave up for you as you were growing up. Think about that. Think about how grateful you are. Most of you are here today because of your mother's prayers. I know I am. There was a third grade class that had been studying magnets and how metal objects are attracted to these magnets. At the end of the semester, the teacher put this question on the exam. It has six letters, starts with the letter M, and picks things up. What am I? Over half the class had the same answer. Say it with me. Mother. Mother. She needs a sincere thank you. Your mother does. Not just today, but from every day. From a genuinely grateful and thankful heart. And it's least expected. It's been said of younger parents, you all 
are living the best days of your life right now because you have your children and your parents. That should cause you to realize two things. What all your parents went through with when you were a kid. And it should make you realize how grateful you should be for both your parents, for your mom and your dad. Love them gratefully. Number six, love her generously. There's nothing too good for your mother. And men, there's nothing too good for your wife. We could never, I know I could never repay my mom for all that she did for me. And you're the same way. You could never repay your mom for the way she raised you. But you ought to die trying. She's worth it. She didn't spend on herself unless all your needs were met first. She could easily do without, and now it's time for her to have something she wants. A math teacher asked a question to her class. If there are ten at a table and one apple pie, how much does each one get? One student said one-ninth. The teacher said, you don't know your fractions. The kid said, you don't know my mother. If there's that many at the table and only one pie, she don't want any. She sacrificed for you. She deserves. She deserves your love, your gratefulness, your generous uh, gratitude for all she's done. And last, love her honorably. The fifth commandment. Exodus 20, verse 12, says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. This is binding as long as your mother lives. As long as your mother and your father live, we are to honor them. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, it says children are to obey their parents. That's non-binding when you marry and you leave the home. If the husband is the head of the household, the mother is the heart. Would you agree? I know my mother was. She is the heart while the husband, the father, is the head of the household. So with her, with that in mind that she is a heart of the ha household, don't break her heart. I know when we're teenagers, we like to think of ourselves. And I look back, uh, my mom raised myself and three of my brothers. My sister was out of the house by then. And I look at all the sacrifices she made. And I did not, and I kicked myself for this, tell her thank you. I did not show my appreciation. I didn't help out as much as I should have. I was all about Sam. Look back at all the mistakes I made. Not honoring my mother the way I did was one of them. When God created mothers, when the good Lord created mothers, he was well into his sixth day. Of overtime when an angel appeared and said you're doing a lot of fiddling on this one the Lord replied this one has to be extra special she has to be completely washable but not plastic have 180 movable parts all replaceable run on black coffee and leftovers have a lap that disappears when she stands up a kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed, disappointing love affair. And six pairs of hands. The angel shook his head and said, six pairs of hands? No way. The Lord said, it's not the hands that are causing me problems. 
It's the three pairs of eyes that mothers are to have. One pair that sees through closed doors when she asks, what are you kids doing in there when she already knows? Another in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't, but what she needs to know. And of course, the ones in front that will look at a child when he goofs up and says, I understand and I love you without so much as uttering a word. I'm very close, the Lord said, to creating something like myself. Already, I have one who heals herself when she's sick, can feed a family of six on a pound of hamburger, and get a nine-year-old boy to stand in the shower. Not only can she think, but she can also reason and compromise. Finally, the angel bent over and ran his finger across the cheek of the mother and said, there's a leak. It looks like you're putting too much into this one. The Lord said, it's not a leak. It's a tear. What's it for? Asked the angel. The Lord said, it's for joy, sadness, disappointment, pain, loneliness, and commitment. You really are a genius, the angel said, looking at the tear. The Lord said, I didn't put it there. Let us never, never be too busy for mom. Let us never be too busy to tell her that you love her, to show her that you love her. Love her verbally. Love her physically. Love her patiently. Love her attentively. Love her gratefully. Love her generously. And love her honorably. In our text today that I read from John chapter 19, Jesus showed love for his mother in every one of these ways. We are to follow the example Jesus sets for us in every way. And loving your mother is no different. Love her in all these seven ways today. Because like I said, or one day, it may be too late. Tell her, show her that you love her. My challenge for you today is to let your mom know how much you love her. Let your mom know how much you appreciate everything she's done for you, all the sacrifices she's made for you, bringing you up. Chances are she's responsible for the person that you are today. And earlier I said she's responsible for you being here. I know without question that I am here because of my mom's prayers. When I was in Florida going through what I always talk about is my stupid years, I know my mom was praying for me. And someone told me not too long ago that my mom told her that she knew someday I was going to be a pastor. <laughs> I had other plans. I had no idea. Love your mom. Show her. Tell her how thankful you are. For her, and if, like me, your mother has gone to be with the Lord, say a prayer. And thank God that he gave you the mother that he did. Let's stand and have a word of invitation. Um, if you need to just come down here and pray and tell the Lord, thank you for my mom. Do that if you need to talk to me, if you need to just pray about anything, that's what this is about. Page 478. 478. <clears throat>